welcome to the second half of the album breakdown of These Paths We Tread. Hopefully you saw the first half. If you didn't, I'll put a link to it up here. Uh, go and check that out because it will kind of make this make a lot more sense because this is only the second half of the album. You want to hear about the first half of the album, obviously. Now, um, the way I broke that down is similar to the way I did the song breakdowns, but the difference is, is I talked about the songs in context and then I talked about the general themes, if you will, of the album. So, without further ado, let's talk about the songs of the second half of the album in context. <laughs> First thing you're probably thinking is second half of the album what do you mean um now if you're listening to it on streaming or cd there isn't a second half of the album but i tend to think of things always in terms of vinyl because it's my favorite format so i kind of when i'm even writing stuff i think about two halves sometimes um and with this album i knew i wanted a big song to start the second half of the vinyl so when you'd flipped that vinyl over you had a big song coming in and it turns out that was centralia now, um, if you've seen us live, you've definitely seen Centralia. It's a song that we quite often start the set with. It's always been a live favourite. It's a song that we're really comfortable with as a band and we've been playing it for a really long time. And it's just a good sort of introduction to the kind of thing that we do. So it seemed a perfect way to start the second side of the album. And on a slightly more technical note, um, for those of you that know about sort of the technicalities of vinyl, um, the outer edge of the vinyl has a slightly better bass response to the inner circle. So therefore songs that start the album, when you start the needle on the edge, have a better bass response. And I knew I wanted Centralia really to hit hard, so with all that bottom end. So that's another reason I put it in first. Um, if you want a more in-depth uh, breakdown of this, then check out um, a more in-depth breakdown of Centralia here. Cool, um, moving on. Uh, so the next song on the album is probably our most Sabbathy song. Um, it's called Main Ads. And again, big live favorite. So much so that at various points, people have actually decided to change the words <laughs> and sing different words along with us. Just to try and I think mess with us when we were on stage and that our first foray into doom, as it was, was in uh, Fear to Tread. I think that we pursue, continue to pursue that. Um, in perhaps a slightly more obvious fashion um, with Maynard's uh, and it's definitely got a total Sabbath vibes and it is kind of, how do I put it, um, just heavy, slow and heavy and kind of it defined a lot of that early sort of thing that we did where we were very slow and very heavy and um, as, as such it was a very popular song back then. And, uh, and it was always fun to play. Um, I would say that um, it's a song that we didn't initially have in the set when Raj first joined the band, but we've since been putting it back in the set and we've sort of fallen back in love with it, I guess, which is great. Uh, so recently on our last tour, we actually brought it back into the set, which was good fun um, because we hadn't played it for a while. So, and we kind of changed some little bits of it and Rajified the drums, as we say, um, brought it a bit more up to date with the other songs but still kept to the core of what the song is, which is the most important part, obviously. And also something worth uh, pointing out, uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that there was a song at the end of the first side and that I guess technically should have been in the last video, but it's not really a song, it's an a cappella song and it was actually uh, sung by uh, Hells and she sang some backing on uh, main ads and when we were in the studio, we just happened to mess around with this kind of a cappella thing, which was just a repetitive line over and over again. It's one of those little experiments that you do in the studio where you don't know if it's actually going to be any good. And we ended up putting that at the very end of uh, the last side of the vinyl. So that would be the fourth song on the album. So it's probably worth a mention. I mean, it's not really a song. It's just a repetitive, like almost chant. And it's like only about a minute or so long. So, but worth mentioning because that itself is connected to main ads it is uh, a sister to it if you will cool and now we come on to the last song of the album which is wrath of aphrodite which is a huge live live favorite we often used to end and sometimes still do end the set with wrath of aphrodite there's just something about it it has that kind of epic quality to it i guess um it has a bit of everything in it it has um 
just lots of bits that you can enjoy as a performer playing and uh, it's quite a recognisable song and I think it's a lot of people's favourite song so uh, we always like playing that. Again, <laughs> some of the bands we toured with, uh, Trevor's Head, I'm looking at you, uh, they felt uh, like they wanted to uh, change the words uh, to Wrath of Aphrodite a couple of times when we were on tour with them and they were in the audience and there's a line of like, um, Goddess Scorned and they changed it to Cob of Corn. That's not annoying at all. Uh, yeah, and they did that repeatedly. I realise now in telling you that, that probably more people are going to do it, but hey, this is what happens, right? Uh, so yeah, Wrath of Aphrodite, big song. Um, obviously, you know, about Aphrodite. If you want a more in-depth look at what Aphrodite is all about, I'll put a link at, again to the song uh, because then I can go more in-depth into it and I've already made the video, so there's no point in just repeating myself here. Okay, so I guess I better move on to um, what the songs are about in a sort of a wider sense of the album. Okay, so album themes. Right, well, as I mentioned before in the first half, uh, myth was the big overarching thing uh, of this album. I was dipping into myth and like I looked into the myth of the main ads, I looked into the myth surrounding Aphrodite. Interestingly, the more I looked into myth, uh, and like Fafnir as well, obviously, for Serpentine, and My Leviathan as well, yeah. So all those were obvious myths that existed. But then I started to realise, you know, the more I read about myth and the more I started to understand myth in a wider context, myths are just stories, right? And so, you know, in a way, you can create your own myth and perhaps that that's what I started to unleash in myself as a songwriter is that 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 my songs are my myth, if you will, are my stories to tell. And uh, I think that really opened the door so that on the next album I really took that and ran with it, which is cool because I think this is where that embryonic stage, the sort of the light bulb went off, and I was just like, ah, myths, my myths, which was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, um, and there's kind of like, like Centralia, for example, is about something that actually happened tangibly, you know, uh, a, a fire uh, in a town and with the coal mine underneath it. But there's a quality to that story that is mythic, you know, fire underneath the earth, billowing smoke, all the people having to leave. And it's so when you realise that that's a real thing that happened and then you got myth and you're like kind of well you know they're the same thing they're just stories really so i hope that kind of makes sense about how the sort of the revelation came about about the differences and um and i think it kind of in general now talking about this album and i didn't mention this in the last video that like another overarching theme in the album is uh, powerful women and i think that's something that I, I wrote these songs initially, some of them, like Maynads and Wrath of Aphrodite, for example, about uh, powerful women. And the thing I've really enjoyed about playing them over the years is obviously I have grown up and matured as a human being and as a male, and my relationships with women have matured as well. And, but, and so in a way, the way I can personally contextualise those songs has evolved as well. But it's still about the same thing. It's still about powerful women. Um, so I've liked that. I've liked that even though it's changed, it's, um, it's always fresh, I think, to me, which is great. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this album breakdown. Um, they are a new thing, and I'm gonna probably do carry on doing them, because uh, it seems like a fun thing to do. And I guess the next one will be The Ties That Bind. So uh, remember to check that out next month. Probably break it down into two again, because it's a bit easier, because I like to waffle a little bit. Um, thanks again to all our Patreons. You keep us going. Um, without you guys, basically, there would be a lot more stress involved in the band. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And hopefully see you guys at a gig again soon. Bye-bye.